formalized as a holiday in the rabbinic period, we find allusions and hints to the miracle of Hanukkah and to the beauty of the light of this time in rabbinic sources and Torah sources well before the Chashmonaim defeated the Greeks and purified the Beit HaMikdash. This concept of the few winning over the many, the weak beating the strong, and those that hold fast and true to their traditions, fighting strong against the winds of change, is something that resonates deep into our consciousness, even in today's day and age. The Talmud tells a beautiful, poignant story, which I think serves as a kind of proto-Hanukkah. It goes like this. It says that the day that Adam Arishon, the first person, was created, the sun began to set, and it was starting to get dark outside, and the skies turn from bright to those bubblegum hues as we see it dip over the horizon. And instead of marveling at the beauty of another sunset, Admarisha was terrified at the first sunset. He said, Maybe the world is becoming dark because of my sin. And as the world is darkening, so too I will be extinguished. As this light is fading, so too I will fade. And he thought that after just one day of human beings on this earth, there would be nothing left that this was the end of creation. And the Gemara describes how Chava, the first woman, has the same feeling, and Adam sits on one side of the tree, and Chava sits on one side of the tree, and with back to back they began to weep and cry over their sin and over their failure and having upheld God's commandment to just do that one thing and not eat from that tree. And something remarkable happens. As they're crying, weeping back to back, in this beautiful scene, the sun rises again, the light, begins to get brighter, and the darkness fades. And Abdul Arisha is so elated that God has given another chance that the darkness wasn't forever, that the darkness didn't last, that he brought a carbon, he brought a sacrifice. Our rabbi is located in this Gemara in the Zara, this kind of proto Hanukkah, which boils everything down, the dreidels, the presents, the parties, the busy schedules, the latkes, the fried foods, all of the fun and games, especially the things that we have planned here in school for our students and children boils it down to one key core idea that I want you to hold very, very tight for the rest of this Hanukkah. That even though it seems very dark outside, it's 4.30 and we're looking around and we're saying, is it really that light? Is it really that dark? And even though the world seems dark right now, in college campuses, around the world, we're thinking of our brothers and sisters in Israel, we see these horrifying images, we see the creeping Rubicon of anti-Semitism, that line just crossed Again and again, it feels dark. Hanukkah reminds us that that darkness doesn't last, it can't last. And if I could just pick out the theme that our school has been talking about throughout this Hanukkah, our Shir Baruch Assembly talks about Banu Choshev the Garish. We take that little hint, we take that little wick, and we use that to be saying the words of Rukh Ma'atmin, Ha'or Docha, Harbei, and Ha'choshev. That little bit of light, we don't curse that darkness, we illuminate that little bit of that light chases away a lot of darkness. May this Hanukkah be very, very beautiful. May the lights of your own home and your own soul illuminate the world. And let's look to our children, the lights of our lives, and a brighter future in which that darkness finally dissipates once and for all.